Roll up, roll up, it's time for the main act. Yep, it's the dreamer's category of motorcycling, the sports bikes. The poster on the wall, the blur of rapid acceleration, spine tinglingly loud, often with similarly noisy liveries to match. Sports bikes are designed to be seen, heard, and lusted for. My name is Oli Barstow, here with Pfizer Down, and this is the top 10 they all want to win, if we handed out prizes, that is. Fortunately, we don't need to because someone else does that for us in the World Superbike Championship. Here we have chosen our 10 favorite sports bikes above 600cc. And while not all of them tried to win on Sunday to sell on Monday, they all have the same pedigree. Often pure riding thrills, regardless of whether your commute is sprinting around Donington Park or popping to Tesco and back. Kawasaki and Aprilia have recently launched brand new models, but where would they feature here? Only one way to find out. And hey, hey, no skipping forward to the good bit, okay? Okay, okay, I can hear the collective groan from here. That's partly because you won't hear much noise coming from this, the energy to ego otherwise. Yes, electric has a long way to go for various reasons, but the ego deserves its spot here because it was way before all those electric buzzwords were cool. A startup company bidding to have its tires planted firmly in a sizzling slice of electric market pie before others eventually join, the ego is already in its second generation. It's a massive step forward in terms of performance and range. It has an equivalent 140 horsepower and can hit 150 miles an hour. Modest figures on paper, but the ego comes alive in its one huge strength, and that's acceleration, which is 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Yes, it's a bit cumbersome to ride, the design is rather bland, and the lack of noise is, well, it's everything to most of you. But as a brand doing this its own way, on its own, it sets a decent standard for the time it exists in. There is something about the Suzuki GSXR 1000R that we just can't help but love. It looks a touch gawky, it's definitely showing its age, and it has slipped behind in the modern 1000cc sports bike race in terms of power. However, the Gixxer remains charismatic in sheer heritage alone, while its engineering is second to none and it still has the measure of many rivals on certain roads. Considering Suzuki's somewhat glacial approach to model development, the GSXR 1000R might be here for a while longer to soldier on but with tempting prices, it's competitive for discernible appeal alone. The middleweight sports bike sector has certainly shrunk in numbers over the years. While the plight of the segment typified by Honda dropping its full fat Honda CBR650RR from its European lineup because it couldn't get the prices and emissions low enough to make it worthwhile. As such, Honda's fared MIDI sports bike is the CBR650R, a touch warmer than warm but not hot enough to dunk a teabag in. If this was a cheeky Nando's, it'd be medium but lavished in sauce. So what does this all mean? Well, the CBR650R wears all the trinkets and decals to mirror its tearaway brother, and the 94 brake horsepower four-cylinder engine is flexible and eager enough to keep up with the most. Perhaps more importantly, if you're a rider in the early stages of your time on two wheels, the CBR650R is the most forgiving but still enjoyable big boy sports bike out there. Things move very quickly in the 1000cc sports bike category, so much so, that the second generation BMW S1000RR launched in 2018 is already the elder statesman of the pack. Indeed, while the S1000RR isn't old per se, its slide down the pecking order is steepened by the way rivals have all brought something new and interesting to the superbike party. It's also no longer the flagship of the BMW range, thanks to the launch of the M1000RR, which doesn't look all that much different, but it's almost double the price. Like the S1000RR, the Yamaha R1 is barely a toddler in a human age, but in sports car terms, it is already middle-aged, worrying about the younger models stealing its spotlights coming up through the ranks. With the latest nip and tuck occurring towards the end of 2019, the R1 is attractive in an understated way. It saves its wow factor for the roads, where Yamaha's decades of honed engineering manifests into an involving ride that, while not the most powerful out there, it can extract the maximum of every horse. However, the R1 is coming up to face an interesting new threat very soon, and it's a threat coming from within Yamaha's fold. We've just had the launch of the brand new Yamaha R7, which not only replaces the R6, but by taking things up a notch, it is sliding closer to R1 territory than ever before. But surely that would risk taking sales for the R1? Well, we think Yamaha would just have to make the R1 bigger and more powerful than ever with its next generation. And we may not have too long to find out. The Aprilia RSV4 has transcended into the stalwarts of the sports bike class, one that despite its relative age, continues to hit certain notes so sweetly you wonder why you waited until 2021 to buy one. 
recently updated with tweet styling and more efficient engines, plus a host of tech filtered down from its MotoGP effort, the RSV4 remains the leaf dynamic focused animal of the sports bike class, particularly in 1100 factory guys. You'll need to save for it though, and really, if you don't need all that power, we suspect the new RS660 will provide a satisfyingly crisp everyday package for a fraction of the price. The Ducati Panigale V4R is really in a class of its own within the sports bike ranks at times. If for nothing else, the V4R is proof of what Ducati will do to regain its world superbike crown, having tweaked the size of that engine down just so it can meet regulation. Through and through, this is peak engineering that is both muscular and yet elegant. It's also devilishly fast with 210 brake horsepower, it's stylish in a way that only Ducati could get away with, and every ride is a treat. In a world of Hondas and Suzukis, no disrespect to them, this is the Ferrari. However, while the Panigale V4R is the ultimate sports bike in concept, the bump to earth reality is a price tag of £35,000. I'll let that sink in for a second, maybe do a quick currency conversion depending on where you are in the world, but that's a staggering 12,000 more than the Honda Fireblade SP. Now, the V4R is good, but it's 12,000 pounds better than a CBR 1000 RRR? Nope, perhaps not. Aprilia's sports bike ownership has for a long time been pinned to each end of the scale, with first time buyers marking their first miles on an RS125, but an RSV4 sports bike, it shows you've really made it in life. However, since no smart rider would consider 125 to 1100 in one ambitious leap, Aprilia has essentially been a game of beginner and expert with no intermediate level in between. This has all changed now though with the launch of the all new RS660, a dynamic focus take on the middleweight class that oozes Aprilia quality, knowledge and attention to detail. Indeed, Aprilia has set to carve out a niche for itself with the first of three models on the 660 platform. The result is a bike that, while underpowered and overpriced on paper, it takes just moments to realise its exceptional, agile and balanced handling doesn't need any more power than it has. Rails are better value, but it also doesn't come close to the same level of track home technology and its premium image. We love the RSV4, but we love the RS660 just a little bit more. A lineage that is as esteemed as it is at times bonkers, it's fair to say the Honda Fireblade has become somewhat mellower in recent years. Honda chasing sales by making it accessible for newcomers, while in turn softening its edge. So trust Honda to be the first to cry not enough at its own creation. After all, why can't a sports bike be a powerful, engaging bullet of a bike and not be easy to ride and reliable at the same time? The result is this, the Honda CBR1000RRR. Yes, it may look like a typo, but more Rs can only be a good thing. So we can't wait for the 15th generation CBR1000RRRRRR. Ah, 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 ah. Alphabet soup or not, Fireblade, now in its seventh generation, remains a quality product but backs this up with some throbbing power, confidence boosting but not overbearing technology, and looks at successfully bringing the Honda CBR signature look into the 2020s. You wouldn't mistake it for a Ducati, but it exudes a similar impression that this is a bike that has only been made possible by the Fireblade's decades of evolution before it. We won't lie, this was probably the motorcycle we were most looking forward to seeing during launch season in 2020. And we won't lie, we are perhaps a little unsure of what to think when the brand new Kawasaki ZX-10R and ZX-10RR were uncovered. Why? Well, despite talk of gaining power, the ZX-10R is barely changed from its predecessor. Then there is a new look which has been, putting it kindly, received a mixed reaction among you lot. And yet, despite this, it is the entry right at the top of our charts. Beginning with those looks, once you see it in the mean green glory for the first time, the ZX-10R is more cohesive and distinctive prospect in the actual flesh. Looks are subjective of course, but this is a bike that needs to be seen. On the road, our doubts just melt away entirely as we realise Kawasaki didn't need big figures to write headlines. Instead working hard to lowering its weight, tweak the electronics and hone the aerodynamics in such a way that it feels more like a 220 brake horsepower motorcycle than a 200 brake horsepower machine it is. As easy to ride as it is thoroughly spine tingling as you push on, the ZX-10R has always found its buyer with its loud image backed up by its transformative world superbike domination. However, this is a ZX-10R with sights set firmly on the faithfuls that vow they would never deviate from a Honda, Ducati or Yamaha et al. If you're going to cheat on your new motorcycle this year with a one night stand, I mean test ride, make sure she is named Kawasaki.
So there you have it. We suspect there will be comments on this, but we love them, good or bad. So get reacting, then like, subscribe for more of myself, Toad and Alex sliding into your news feeds. Ciao for now, amigos. Mm -hmm.